All right, y'all, it is time. We're doing it. The Bells by Jeff Mills. So right away, you hear this huge kick drum hitting. You have this fidget synth. It just sounds like it's fidgeting around. So you just have that in the kick. It's only a one bar loop. So very straight to the point. So we're going to hear that for a while. And then we're going to get to eight bars in and we're going to now hear the offbeat. There's a lot of offbeat in this track. And by the way, if you haven't listened to this track in a while, go listen to the version um, that I'm breaking down. There's a link to that in the description. Because if you, ha- if you don't know what I'm referencing, you're going to have no clue what's going on. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you want to watch anyway. I don't know. So now we got this offbeat hat coming into play. And uh, let's check that out. Now you'll notice right around here, we're hearing another offbeat join the party. This is a ride cymbal. And I think it's cool because, look, it's coming in about a bar and a half in. So uh, I don't know my history that well. I'm sure some of y'all know the answer to this. So just please write it in the comments. And by the way, please subscribe if you're into this. But uh, And if you're not, just do it anyway. You're going to love it. Um, but basically, I think that he played this live because it just has that feel. I mean, it's kind of weird to program in a hat with such a volume automation the way that it was automated at bar 10. Usually you add things in bars of 2, 4, 6, 8, 16. And this is just a very human, oh, let's just throw it in there real quick. And you can just tell by the way the volume is risen and by the year this was made in, it, it just sounds more believable. Yeah, so we have this offbeat ride happening. It's joining the game. <laughs> And now we have even more offbeat coming in. So this is really all about offbeats. He's just giving you this brutal kick, hitting you in the face with the fidgety thing, and then adding all of these offbeats. So we had the offbeat hat, which I think is just an open 909 hat. And then the 909 ride comes into the game. And now we're getting the 909 clap into the game as well. So it's just kick, offbeat, fidget. Very straightforward banging stuff. So let's listen to that clap. And I put with delay because it does sound like there might be a slight delay on the clap. Let's hear it from here actually. So we got that cute little break here where we get to focus on the fidgety little, right? I know it's not mapped exactly the the right way, but I just wanted an approximation. You're fine. All right. So now we're going to, he drops it out for just a second. Then he's like, you know what? Have it again. All right. And now here's where the magic happens. So we're about 56 seconds in, and here comes the famous bells. Pretty spooky, and uh, yeah, pretty simple melody too. That's probably why it's so effective. But uh, yeah, so you see I broke it out, bell one and bell two. Now I think this was probably actually played on the same track with the same synthesizer because I think, and again, someone out there probably knows this because it's actually probably not that deep of history, but I just don't know it. Uh, But I would imagine that it was probably played on one synth because then that would mean that you have one bell synth, one bass line synth, a fidget synth, and then the drums that gives you eight tracks. And I'm pretty sure that recording with eight tracks was just very much a standard thing to do. But again, you know, comment if you know. And if you're wondering why I don't know and I'm making this video, then please just subscribe. I just want to point out something. I always 
I love a good call and response. It's so common. And you get this in a lot of major pop songs too. It's just it's just funny how the concept of call and response occurs in pop music, but it also occurs in like these deep underground techno tracks. And if you're wondering, hey Alex, what do you mean by that? Well, first hear this bell. <laughs> So it does something, and then this other synth, or this other bell line goes. This one's like almost mimicking this one. Like this one says, hey, I'm this big melody, check it out. And then this one says, you know what? I like that. I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. It sounds like two different voices. And so because it sounds like two different voices, it's it's creating a dialogue, a sense of dialogue. And that's that's just like cool. You know, people like listening to dialogue. So then you're just going to keep playing this bell melody. Just to point out, we're about we're almost a minute thirty in, and we've we've mostly just been really riding this groove with the bells. I mean, once the bells comes in, that's when we know okay, main theme established. Here we go. But yeah, up until this point, we've mostly just been chilling on that groove. Now I think this part's important here, where I put low volume because we're gonna keep moving forward by playing this melodic piece over and over again, but we're going to give us a different interpretation of that groove. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, what I mean is like this clap's going to reduce in volume a lot. And in doing that, it's going to open up the sonic landscape in the sense that now there's no clap. So because there's no clap, now we can hear the fidget synth and the bell synth with much more clarity, which just kind of gives us a new interpretation of those elements because we can hear it more clearly. And that's just pretty tight. And people like that. So, yeah. <laughs> So here, I'll rewind a bit and then check that out. I hope you could tell. So another way to think of it is, is like at this point, because you have so much stuff happening on the offbeat, it gets all kind of clumping together and the mix sounds really full, but you're not getting a ton of separation between the sound of the kick and the sound of the offbeat. It's that space in between those two elements that just make them each punch harder. Because, because you're getting a, a rest of silence in between the kick and the offbeat, that gives your body a moment to really take the punch, if you will. But if it's just smothered, then it's like you're taking a punch, but then you're also getting like laid down on it. It's all fuzzing up together. So yeah, and so that's a, that's a pretty significant difference. And that's why here with the low volume, we get a new interpretation. So let's check that out again. Here's the busy one, here's the more giving it space to just hit you in the face. I mean, both hit you in the face, but in different ways. This one, the kick, I feel like is more up in your business and this one, the hat does. So whatever, we got this new interpretation and now you're gonna see a really cool way to, to bring about variation it, because it's so simple. They're just gonna mess with the pitch I put lower here and then higher here. They're gonna mess with the pitch of the offbeat hat and the offbeat ride. And that's just gonna create variation. It'll just keep you interested in listening to these bells. So let's just listen to this chunk. <laughs> See that? So it drops down here and then it goes up there. And he probably just said that with his hand. I 
I also love how simple these little drum breaks are. I mean, it's actually not even a break. Instead of a drum break, they just he just drops out the drums, and that makes you go, "Oh, we're gonna repeat some sort of cycle." If he hadn't done that, then you wouldn't get that "oh" moment, and because you don't have that, you get tired of the loop. <laughs> We're getting some new stuff because even though this has all been fun, we're almost two minutes in and we could use something else to listen to because we've been listening to that thing for a while. So maybe it'd be nice to hear something different. And so because of that, you'll notice that we're getting this 16th note percussive part starting to rise into the track and just add some some more variation. Variation because it's it's a whole new element. And then you're also gonna get this weird baseline thing start to come in. So again, I put rising on there because I just thought it'd be cool to note that the it's it's not being brought in all of a sudden. It's it's being like risen by a human pushing a knob that says volume. It's just cool to note that because if, if you are watching this to just try and understand the track or just to like, if you're a producer or something, I don't know. It's just cool to see that sometimes this is something you can do you or you can raise it up over a long period of time rather than just lurched in right away but uh yeah so let's uh let's let's listen for this loop for a bit and let's get to know the bass line and this rising 16th note thing here <laughs> That's cool because as a listener, we were rewarded by getting some new stuff to hear. That bass line really started to come into the fold. And then we got, I put falling here because I think at the end they like drop it down. But uh, the bass line started to come in and now I put steady here because those 16th note percussive elements are not really rising anymore. They're now just at a solid level, just playing away. And that's cool. So we're like, oh great. Now we had this whole new groove with this new stuff. This is awesome. So then we go into this section though, which is basically saying, hey, I'm glad you got all into that, but let's just go ahead and simplify it again. And so it gets pretty close to what the intro was. Pretty close, not exactly the same. We have those offbeats. Now that is the intro right there. And then, and so it's at this point that I actually made the track a different color because I feel like here is almost a reset. So this first big part of the song, I'll just make this all one color. This first part of the song was basically building up a groove and then adding variation to that groove via these things we've talked about earlier. But basically like kind of sticking with this one big groove. And now, once we get to this section, you're just going to kind of start the process over again. You're going to strip it down to the intro. Then you're going to start layering it, which is what we did here. Yeah, so you're basically going to do a very similar thing where you're going to just build it up again and um, roll with this new baseline and stuff. They're gonna get into it, like they're gonna progress faster, but you know, that's still what happens. So let's just, let's just, we're just gonna listen to this section all the way through.
Cool. So basically, I lied a little bit. Yeah, we're building it back up again, but we are building it up in a much different way because now we're not so reliant on the bell melody to carry the day because now they're really letting the bass line shine because the bell melody is not there. And that fidget thing's been there the whole track, so we we get it. We're not that interested anymore. Now we're more interested in this bass line. So yeah, it is just building back up again like it was in the beginning, but we are highlighting some different stuff, namely the bass line. And I like it a lot here, or sorry, I like it a lot right here because then the fidget thing drops out. And up until this point, the fidget thing's been in the song the whole time, so now we're really focused on that bass line. <laughs> It's going to keep going for a while and I actually wrote sort of a bridge because we've now lost the fidget and we don't have the bells this this just seems like such a new part it seems so different and because of that just it just feels so like it's taking us to another dimension and that's basically how bridges feel But yeah, so that's gonna keep playing out. They're gonna keep dropping out stuff. Here it comes back, and it just lets the fidget play out. It brings the drums back in a bit. And then it ends. Cool song. You got five drums. You got three of them being off beats. And then you got a fidget line, a bass line, and then a bell line. You're going to start by building up a groove, pushing those bells. Then you're going to break it back down. Then you're going to push the groove back up and highlight this new bass line. And then you're going to go back to the first section. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you did. Go ahead and comment if you have another video you want me to do or another track you want me to do, rather. That's about it. Follow Response at response.response .response on Instagram. You can follow myself, Alex Wilcox, at Alex Wilcox on Instagram as well. All right. Y'all have a good one. And adios.